So let's add a new property. You'll notice the first field we see, whereas in posts or pages, it would be title. In this case, we call it display address. It's essentially the same thing, but uh, this is essentially the title or the address which is shown to the public on the website. So you wouldn't put 12 High Street in the full postcode. You'd put High Street town name, or maybe just the first bit of the postcode. So this is how it appears to the public. So let's go ahead and enter a um, an address. You'll notice that when we click out of that, what's pretty cool is it tries to take what we've entered and auto-complete the full address. Obviously, it doesn't know what's a town and what's a locality and things, so we might just need to move stuff around, but that should save some time and reduce errors. Let's just enter a postcode there as well. What you'll notice is we've got the display address at the top. We've then got a number of tabs at the top, so summary, details, marketing, descriptions, media. Summary is the first one, and that's the one we're in at the moment. So in the summary, we get the property address. If we're storing the property owner or landlord, we can search for them there, or we can add a new contact as well. We have record details, so if you're using this in more of a CRM sense, what you would probably do is set up all your negotiators as WordPress users and they would then appear under Negotiator. And again, with Office, if you have multiple offices and you've set them up under Settings, you can then choose which property this office is assigned to. The last section under Summary is the location. So what it's done is it's taken the address, it's looked it up, and it's tried to plot it on a map. So you can either then manually change the latitude and longitude, or what's pretty cool is you can manually click the marker and place it exactly where the property is located and that'll then in turn update the latitude and longitude. So that's great if you're gonna display the map on the front end, or if you're gonna export the property to a third party portal. What you can do is if you mess up or you're not sure, you just click obtain a coordinates and that'll then reset it back to where it started. So flicking across to the next tab, this is the more details about the property. So department is the primary field here, sales or lettings. Again, we covered it in the settings video. Under settings, you can choose which departments are shown here, either sales, lettings or commercial, and also which is the primary one. So if we had lettings as the primary, this would be ticked by default. You'll see that toggling between them then changes the fields shown below. So if I've got sales ticked, I get sales related fields. And likewise with lettings, I then get rent and deposit and things. So sales, we get things like price, price qualifier, sale by tenure. And again, all fields like this where their dropdowns can normally be modified under settings and custom fields. Residential details, so again, bedrooms, bathrooms, types etc and again these bottom three can be changed in the custom fields in settings marketing so this is where and how it gets shown on the website so firstly is it on the market if that's unticked it won't be shown when someone runs a search on the site but the url will still be accessible so if someone could find it by google or type it in manually the reason for that is normally the life cycle would be when you add a property it would be on the market in which case it would appear but then when it comes off the market you would untick it the reason we don't delete the property or draft it or change the status of it is that you then end up with a bunch of 404 errors which isn't good for seo essentially so we leave the URL available but remove it from all results that would be shown. If that is the case where it's unticked and someone has stumbled across the URL we do display a message at the top saying this property is not available. Availability, is it for sale, is it to let, is it sold, STC. Featured, so we have a featured shortcode featured underscore properties which when you drop it in will show featured properties. This just determines if this property appears when you use that shortcode. And then last but not least, marketing flags. We have four marketing flags added by default. You can again change these under custom fields. What this allows you to do is one of two things. One is you can display a flag or some people call it a sash on the property record. Uh, as well, you can filter by this. So on the front end, you could say, show me just chain free properties or just new instruction properties. A handy little way there of storing additional information about a property. Descriptions. At the moment, we've got, uh, if we flick to settings and then miscellaneous, we've got it selected that when entering features, you should be able to select from a predefined list. If I allow features to be free types, you could free type the features in here. So just depends which setting you've got selected under settings. If it's free type, you can have as many as you want. You can also reorder them as well. Property summary description. So this is the summary which appears on search results. And then with regards to the full description, we don't have one big box where you enter the full description. We have individual rooms. You might enter bedroom one, you might enter the dimensions and then the description. The reason for this one is that sometimes we import or export properties from or to third parties and they use the same format so we can send them the individual rooms. Secondly is in the future we will look at being able to assign images to individual rooms and then we can do things like brochures and nicely formatted output on the website. Forward thinking there but when you enter multiple rooms we just concatenate them all together. Sometimes you might want something that isn't the room so you might have location or some information about tenure or council tax so in that case you can essentially use location as a room located in X. Reorder them, drag and drop them around if you want to change the order.
Next up is media. So this is everything relating to photos, floor plans, files, which people can view or download about the property. All of these use the standard WordPress media management. So if I click add photos, you get the standard WordPress media upload and I can just drag images in. And again, with, with photos and floor plans on all of these, you can have as many as you want. You can also, if there is multiple, you can drag and drop them around. So photos, floor plans, brochures, EPCs, and then last but not least is virtual tours. So again, as many as you want, normally just a URL to YouTube or Vimeo or a third party virtual tour company. So once we're happy, we just click publish property. That's then added. And you'll see that if we go back to properties, that's then appeared. You got the photo, the address, What's also worth noting on this area is there's a lot of filters we have available. So once you've got a lot of properties, and obviously over time, as some cut off the market, it's gonna build up. Using these, you can quickly filter the properties down. So we can filter by department, sales or lettings, marketing status. So do we wanna see on market only, only featured, or do we only wanna see ones which have a specific marketing flag? If you have an add-on available, like one that sends properties to the portals, also in here is options to filter by only properties active on Portal X, which is a good way to manage uh, your properties. Again, just a few more filters, so availabilities. We don't have any locations, but if we did, they would appear there, offices and negotiators. From here, we can uh, view the property on the front end, or we can go in and make further changes. You'll notice we've got the same tabs here. You'll notice we've also got an extra few tabs. Now we've added the property and come back to it. We've got a few extra tabs here, viewings, offers, sales, and inquiries. So this will show all the viewings, offers, sales, and inquiries specific to this property. Obviously there's none at the moment, but if there were, they would appear here. If you're not gonna deal with viewings, offers, and sales, and inquiries, uh, we covered it in the settings video, but what you can do under settings, there's a modules area where you can choose which modules you don't want to see. So if you ticked that you don't wanna use the viewings module, you wouldn't get viewings related options. So you wouldn't get this viewing tab here, you wouldn't get this action here, and likewise for offers and sales. The only thing left to note on a property is you have this history and notes section. So you can even manually type a note in. So that will then appear as a test and we can and delete it. There will also be system generated notes. So if you are using things like viewers, offers and sales, if let's say for example, an offer was accepted, a note would appear here in the notes and the history and it then acts as more than just notes, but also as a log as to a, a property's life cycle. So that's the property area. Hopefully you can see how easy it is to, to add and manage and edit properties.